Good morning everyone and happy Friday! Today it's our last episode of the mini-series we had this week with Heidi from the My School Room about the role of the DMC and its new value proposition. Today we have another very interesting topic for you, which is... Hi! Hello, Heidi! Good morning, Elena! <laughs> How are you? Great, and you? Excellent, yeah, it's Friday. Hi, Rebecca, Kim. Look, we have our uh, our uh, regular followers joining in. That's nice yes. to see. Yes, thank you for following along uh, for the <laughs> entire week. And today, our topic is the ultimate incentive experience. So I'm very excited about this topic because this is, for me personally, the most exciting part of the MICE travel. And that's uh, where you can make really unique and exciting things at the destination. So we get straight to the questions. Um, can you explain what is an incentive? Yes, an incentive is something used to stimulate investment, to motivate and encourage someone to do something. And basically, that is the general definition of an incentive. Okay, and uh, what are the, um, wait, 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 I have a, a comment from Kim saying, so they make this session even better today by going on the treadmill. So yeah, so wow. <laughs> let us know where you're watching us. <laughs> Amazing, that's motivation yeah. in itself. Well done. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and today we're going to talk about incentives, which are also motivation, yeah. so <laughs> that's on point. Um, yeah, and uh, what type of incentives you organize? Um, actually, mostly mid to high level management uh, okay. incentives, which are often multi destination experiences. Yes. Like the most common is a five day, four night program that would often yeah. be over two different destinations within uh, Norway. So that would be a program with lots of exciting experiences along the way and many, many surprises that the actual guests don't necessarily know about beforehand, which makes yeah. it extra exciting. But okay, that's four to five days. It's pretty long. I saw that would be rather two to three, but that's interesting. No, okay. we have, we have, depends on the budgets, obviously, yeah. but um, most of our business is mid-high level, so they expect yeah. a certain yeah. level of, of quality and also they have higher budgets. Mm -hmm. But we do have a lot of long weekend incentives, for example, yeah. like it doesn't have to be expensive. We have yeah. um, programs starting at around uh, 800, 900, 900 euro a person, everything included. Yeah. So uh, there's different levels, but mm -hmm. the most, uh, the biggest part of our incentives mm -hmm. are the, the five day programs. Okay. And what are the usual objectives of an incentive? Hi, Laura, Megs, Tina. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So the, the um, objectives are obviously it's important for companies to boost morale in mm -hmm. their, um, within their company to, to motivate their um, employees, to reward them for delivering on certain targets that have been set, uh, to recognize them for special efforts they have made over a specific period of time, and also very much to increase loyalty to towards a brand uh, because um, you know it's about boosting team spirit inspiring the employees uh, to feel um, one with their company and with the values of their company and it's been proven on many occasions that companies with a, a nice incentive system mm -hmm. have a, a solid growth in terms of sales, but also in terms of um, they are much uh, scoring much higher on um, employee retention, for mm -hmm. example, because their employees are much more loyal to the company because they feel seen, they feel appreciated, they feel uh, rewarded for their efforts, and that and that's uh, that's very important. Important. Um, incentives deliver 
a, a different type of value compared to, for example, a cash compensation. Yeah. Employees really feel a scene. It's a more a sentimental reward for their efforts. Um, it, it's it's a, it's deeper. It gives access to unique experiences mm -hmm. that are much more valuable for many people than to just mm -hmm. receive a salary increase yeah. or, or something yeah. monetary uh, that is uh, not making you feel uh, very warm in your heart of course yeah. it's nice to get some extra money but it's not yeah. something that would make you necessarily appreciate your company yeah. that much more yeah yeah when you think about receiving an 800 euros bonus or going on an incentive to norway that's much more rewarding i think and um i remember i read a couple of articles uh through site about discussing the, the advantages of an incentive over a monetary reward and incentive it's much more powerful it's much more memorable and i can still remember some of the experiences that i had when i went on fam trips and i had the chance to experience something very unique and i still have this in my memories even like it was four years ago and the right. message that was delivered it was so powerful and involved all the all the senses so i think that's the chance of the incentives to to deliver on a very visual message as well. Yeah. Definitely, people talk about it for years. Exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Dina is also adding it's for employee branding, so yeah. But we, we don't forget also companies don't only reward their employees, but they yeah. can also reward their clients, mm -hmm. key accounts, yeah. uh, clients or, uh, or uh, potential big buyers um, mm -hmm. and they incentivize them to yeah. also increase the loyalty towards a specific brand yeah. by, uh, by uh, letting them join on a, mm -hmm. on a beautiful trip. Yeah. And what, what part of your business accounts to incentive travel in percentage? Well, um, actually, it's always been about 70 to 80 percent, which is quite high. But uh, last year, it was only 50 percent. Um, I'm not sure if it's a trend. I don't think it's a trend. It's just, you know, you have to also see that um, destinations go in circles. Like, for example, Scandinavia is very popular a certain year. And then the next year, everybody travels south and then it comes back. Um, but also, we had a lot of uh, conferences uh, last mm -hmm. year and a lot of uh, product launches so because of that part of our because that part of our business increased a lot the percentage of, uh, of incentives mm -hmm. was uh, was lower on the total but that doesn't mean we we organized fewer mm -hmm. and there were still uh, quite a lot of uh, amazing projects that we did yeah but and, actually yeah. um yeah um it's, I believe it's, it's going to keep uh, going up and down like that. Yeah. So not necessarily, you cannot necessarily say this is the fixed percentage mm -hmm. uh, in terms of our business. It's, yeah. it's also in, in, to some extent uh, coincidental. Yeah. So it's, mm -hmm. I think also that what I noticed from a destination perspective that some destinations, they have one year, a very high budget and the destination in ge generally is, is promoting itself across other channels, not not just the DMC or the convention bureau. And then, like overall, the destination gets very high exposure, and that might stimulate the interest also on the my side. Maybe mm -hmm. that's what and I think also. The power of big brands, like if yeah. you have uh, one big brand doing their incentive in a specific destination, there's automatically a lot of other companies following yeah. that, yeah, yeah, that's which is uh, always very exciting. Yeah. And yesterday you mentioned that the lead time of an incentive is, is shorter because the Congress, it might take three years, four years to, to finalize and take place, but incentive can be a short lead time. So what's the average lead time to plan them? And is there any seasonality to incentives? Um, generally speaking, for mid-scale incentives, then we're talking about the biggest part of our incentive business, which is from 20 people to about 150 people. Yeah. Um, the lead time would be six months to up to a year most of the mm -hmm. time. Um, if we're talking more uh, like bigger scale incentives, like we've done some for several thousands of people and there's 
several in the in the pipeline again now then it's often at least one and a half year up until two years because obviously logistically it's a much bigger challenge to plan an incentive for two three five thousand people than it is for 20 people so you need a much longer time for that but we've had some um, some extremely short times like the record last last year was one weekend wow. <laughs> this uh, it, it's it's also been a bit of a favor i would not necessarily say yes to that uh, in yeah. any case but it was um, an agency owner that i know very well uh, from france who contacted me and uh, he called me on a friday night <laughs> <laughs> and said hey i need to confirm this project on monday can you yeah. do it? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, fine. Let's do it. And so, so we worked. We worked uh, throughout the weekend to make that happen, and okay. the guests actually arrived in the destination three weeks later. So the project was delivered, and everything was done in in a very, very, very short time wow, that's frame. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. That's how also people, possible. How many? People? We get. Oh, that was just about 40 people. It's not necessarily a large-scale thing. It was a long weekend uh, yeah. in Oslo, a combination of, of, uh, of um, uh, the capital highlights and also uh, winter team building in the, in the snow. And what, what do you think about seasonality? Does it have um, seasonality? Because looking at the conferences, they always take place about what, September to October, right? Um, and uh, also January, February, but how about um, incentives? Incentives, well, Norway in itself is an all year round destination. So you can travel to Norway whenever in the year. There are so many smaller destinations to choose from. And according to the specific project and the time of the year, we will be able to recommend you the best place to go. But generally speaking, in terms of number of requests, the highest number of requests are for uh, the winter time with the Northern Lights, which is, uh, of course, one of the major attractions for Norway uh, to begin with. Yeah. Uh, so the high season would be between middle of November and middle of March for those okay. types of uh, incentives. And then for the fjord experience, even though you can do fjords all through the year like it's yeah. even very cool in the winter time you get like a really uh, viking atmosphere with yeah. some you know <laughs> some mist in the fjords it's really cool but most of the requests are for may and june okay so um may june the summer months uh basically because it's warmer a lot of people yeah. still have this idea that norway is always freezing no it's actually pretty enjoyable and <laughs> very much comparable to to the rest of, of uh, western europe yeah. but um in the summertime it's a little bit warmer um and also uh june uh is very popular for the midnight sun experiences oh, that's yeah. also a natural 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 phenomenon yeah. because uh, you might know that in norway we have uh, days with no darkness uh, up north in the summertime and the opposite in the winter it stays dark and you have northern lights so that's a very very special experience both seasons for anybody to to ex to to be a part of and to yeah to see for the first time and it's quite special say that off season of incentives would be slightly cheaper when you don't have the natural occurrences there is more capacity in the hotels would you say there is a price difference there is a price different difference definitely uh, but it's not uh, as huge as in many other countries but okay. it's basically of course as everywhere else based on uh, on uh, uh, capacity availability yeah. so so if you have uh, if you have hotels that are 90% full your yeah. price will be higher than than when they only have uh, 40% occupancy yeah. of course so so and that's always a, a key factor in uh, in a budget so uh, in terms of activities etc uh, depending on the style of activities if you have winter activities uh, snow scooter safaris under the northern lights uh, dog sledding they are obviously uh, more expensive in the yeah. winter time you can do uh, the, the summer version on wheels yeah. uh, the price will be a little bit different it's also yeah. great but you know yeah there are differences in pricing obviously and the uh, question from Rebecca do you have incorporated CSR, corporate social responsibility in one of your incentive programs. Can you give some examples? Yes, of course. Um, CSR is becoming more and more important. Mm -hmm. So, so um, we offer it 
on a regular basis we don't just as with the sustainability it's actually yeah. a little bit similar there's not really that many active requests for it but if you talk about it and if you suggest something uh, they'll be like oh yeah that's interesting let's do that um for norway it's always been especially in the beginning of uh, of uh, incorporating csr it's always been kind of a challenge of finding uh, what can we do because you hear these stories of you know building schools in africa uh, you know support in very poor yeah. communities yeah. Uh, uh, in norway we we have we are blessed with with not having that much mm -hmm. poverty um so it's it's on a different level yeah. uh, so what we like to do is basically uh do environmental uh, uh, environmentally friendly activities or supporting the environment like beach cleanups mm -hmm. uh combine it with with a with a fjord experience or a, an island experience in front of the coastline uh, do a picnic somewhere you know do a clean up in the same time those are quite popular in uh, in Norway and also depending on the the industry it can go in any direction like another example would be um healthcare professionals visiting one of the pioneering uh, mm -hmm. uh companies for medical supplies in in Norway that deliver all their mm -hmm. medical supplies to uh third world countries to save lives and give them for example a first aid course and do something like that yeah. where they basically understand the value of what an organization is doing and they also learn something and they also if they want to can contribute to the actual uh, organization um both financially and by sharing knowledge i remember uh, when i was in copenhagen i believe it was 2015 um it was a fam trip but um it was around christmas time and one of our uh, team building activities was to go and buy presents for kids who couldn't afford it and uh, it it was also very nice to, to yeah. yeah yeah definitely yeah there's um, also a lot of focus on uh, on mental health in in yeah. norway so we we did some some uh, workshops around that um you know a lot of people that visit have um, heard about um Uh, low mental health in nordic countries and mm -hmm. we get that question a lot so okay. you have on one side the 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 idea that um uh, we are the happiest countries in the world like based on the happiness index uh, every year it comes out norway and the rest of the scandinavian countries always rank the highest mm -hmm. but on the other side you also have uh mental health um that is quite a big topic so we can do workshops around that uh with local therapists uh, you can visit organizations agents that support um support uh, people with the psychological uh, issues we've done things where you actually create a beautiful uh, experience and event a little concert where you go with the, with your incentive group and mingle with the with those people and have a fun time have like a party or have a have a meal together which is also very very valuable in terms of uh, CSR yeah. so yes to answer to you I believe the the question came from Tina and also um uh, yeah Monaco definitely I can see you if you are if you are a, a welfare country like uh, um you don't necessarily have those types of hands on uh, helping the local community uh, activities as much as you would um, elsewhere yeah yeah it's very interesting thank you for the question um and what are the typical must have elements to include in an incentive so from what i remember learning during my uh, degree our teacher said you always have to have um a, a meet and greet with an important person <laughs> and offer a lifetime <laughs> experience that you wouldn't have access to <laughs> Uh, a lifetime experience sure but meet a, a celebrity sure it's it's fun but i mean a, a famous person or a local celebrity can be many different things yeah. it doesn't have to be a, a major artist it can be a key person it can be a a, a globally accomplished architect it can be a, a michelin star chef you know so of course we include those elements in our incentive so for us everything always needs to be unique and different and exclusive yeah. and exclusive doesn't necessarily mean um a luxurious yeah. exclusive has many different interpretation yeah. exclusive yeah. I is that i started it was 2014 so things changed since so <laughs> it's, it's also yeah. like uh... <laughs> there's an evolution definitely yeah. <laughs> yeah but i mean 
exclusivity can be exclusive access to place, yeah. right? Uh, we our clients, incentive clients, and companies who organize incentives travel around the world constantly. Mm, yes. They see everything everywhere, and they are always looking for the next newest mm. thing that they haven't done before. Yes, right. Exactly. You ha you can do a lot of the same activities in a lot of different countries, but it's very very important to always find an angle to a specific uh, activities that is new that somebody else hasn't necessarily thought about so with incentive guests it's important to to find those angles and to make the impossible happen basically to give access to places that are not uh, open to the general yeah. public uh, to set up dinners and uh, uh, parties where you you would you could never imagine like yeah. surprise elements you arrive somewhere and it's totally wow it's really out of this world in terms yeah. of setting um turn every experience into an immersive one like yeah. uh, don't do guided tours uh, with buses or or, or or just walks but have an extra element to it that people experience it in a different way and as you mentioned earlier it's important to involve all the senses mm -hmm. so you need to experience things on on multiple levels uh, during a during an, uh, an ex incentive and then there is a definitely interaction with the local community yeah. Yeah. so we do a lot of things where you you go and uh, meet local entrepreneurs yeah. you do uh, some tastings with them but you also hear the story of yeah. their business you, you hear you get inspired by by yeah. how they do things and yeah. it's often very very different in Norway compared to to where the guests yeah. are from so they get inspired again on another on another level which is quite cool and it can also be like uh, like we mentioned already er earlier food journeys you go and meet a farmer you go to a cheese factory you go to a brewery and you, you basically uh, explain and tell the story from the beginning until the actual product that is served to to yeah. your guests things like that yeah um yeah Inspire. it's Inspire. It, it hugely evolved i remember the time when I started 2011-2014, it was about this luxurious, exclusive experience, meeting some football star or tennis star. But it's involved so much in this time that it's more about meeting the local and connecting with the local community. Um, question from Tina. How often do you experience the following case? Client or an agency is asking for an authentic, typical incentive trip to Norway, for example, and at the end they decide to go to Mallorca, also completely different. <laughs> I feel you, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> it, it happens often, especially with agencies. Um, we mentioned also in our earlier talks that we are often in competition with many destinations at the same time. So we would get a request from an agency that is maybe one of several agencies in the source market asked by the client, and each agency would suggest maybe three different destinations. Mm -hmm. So let's say we as Norway, we are one of nine mm -hmm. uh, in, in the initial process in that case. That means that you have to be extremely innovative and creative. You have to be super fast you have to deliver from the first instance and build a strong connection with the agency so they will at least even consider going to your destination right so you, you build that relationship um, but there are so many different factors involved like it happened to us several times on several occasions that we went from uh, phase to stage to stage to stage and you are now there and we are now in the final and now these and these countries are out uh, now it's between Norway and um, Kazakhstan mm -hmm. okay or now it's between Norway and Mexico <laughs> you know there is no relation whatsoever it's often about the excitement that mm -hmm. that a DMC or a destination can bring and it happens also very often that a client is interested in a specific destination in the beginning but gets inspired by something else along the way and changes their opinion along the way so that happens too so it's 
definitely not uh, something that is uncommon, uh, Tina. Um, we also have had, and even the agencies often tell us this is a done deal, like this is 99% uh, Norway. They are so excited, they are so inspired. And then suddenly, uh, the next day, uh, uh, some director came back from a holiday or saw a TV documentary about something in whatever country, and suddenly they change and go there. Yeah. So it, it, it it's a, a, a real struggle because you invest all your time specifically if there's that much competition and it's such a long period of time to go from one step to the next. It's very sad that you lose those uh, in the end. But a lost project in one year is a, a one project maybe the next. So yeah. specifically if it's an agency, you have they have so many clients. So if they're very happy with what you delivered in your proposal, and your your service they will definitely try and resell the work that you've done to some of their other clients which obviously also is a good thing yeah so we I have Tina, Kim and Laura agreeing that it happens to them as well yeah mm. um, and is Norway an incentive destination or is it a congress destination or exhibition destination it's all of them, but if Norway isn't an incentive destination, then no other country is. <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> It's a, it's a wonderful country, of course, and there's so much to do in Norway and so many different destinations to, to choose from. Um, the feedback is also always literally out of this world. Yeah. Without, without bragging, it's usually this is one of the best incentives we've ever been on and that is also not only because of the quality that is delivered and what they get to experience but by the fact that you have the added bonus of these amazing surroundings mm -hmm. all the time so you really we we really are able to move the visitors emotionally like mm -hmm. i've had people in shock i've had people cry in the fjords literally <laughs> telling me like okay we believed all of your descriptions yeah. but you have to say it's so beautiful it makes yeah. you cry you know yeah. <laughs> so, so, so yeah. you, you, That's people you really know that what you do has a deeper purpose Yes, you have yeah. to feed the soul, you know, yeah. inspire people, but feel the soul and, and move them on a deeper level. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, definitely uh, Norway is, is an amazing destination uh, to yeah. do incentives that have people going home uh, uh, with tears of happiness. Yeah. And what <laughs> are the current trends in incentive travel? We talked about the local, uh, the communities, meeting the locals. What else? Well, Sustainable incentives, yeah. more and more uh, green incentives. So, so we discussed the topic of sustainability earlier, uh, and it's uh, it's a trend to to try and make activities and experiences more green. So that's definitely one. Uh, and there is in the same the younger generation, so groups of uh, of um, people in their twenties and thirties, they want to feel that they are making an impact somehow, or they are part of a community, or they are contributing to a goal. So there is where the topic of CSR comes in, uh, or they can also be part of a, another style goal, which is innovation. Innovation is is uh, a topic we use very often in our programs because there's a lot of exciting pioneers and innovators uh, in Norway in different industries so that can also be contributing to a goal towards a more sustainable future if you if you visit those uh, green startups for example uh, and get inspired and take all of that knowledge and education with you back home yeah. um, storytelling is still a big thing um, a little bit less it was a big hype uh, about two, three years ago yeah. where everything really needed to be storytelling yeah. uh, and, 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 and the a whole story from beginning to end. Of yeah. course, we, we still do that and we present programs in such a way that it makes sense in terms yeah. of flow. You know, you have to, uh, just as in any meeting, you need to create a flow that balances um, uh, the, 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 the speed, the variety of activities, you know, the engagement levels at all times throughout yes. your program. 
you need to ha go from a fast pace to a little slower pace and you know you, you, you build a specific flow and that yeah. also contributes to a story often mm -hmm. uh, agencies still I see work with a lot of storytelling even if you don't necessarily have a hundred percent focus on it as a DMC yes. they will often turn it into a story before delivering it to their end clients um, and then I can definitely see and this is quite surprising an increase in more adrenaline filled activities and uh, more towards extreme sports and adventures like people who were never into um, activities on a higher fitness level or like hiking uh, or you know, it always used to be a little bit too demanding or companies would say, yeah, I'm not sure that's going to work for the entire group. You know, not yeah. everybody is equally fit. But now I get more and more requests asking for, okay, we want to, you know, climb that mountain, we, you know. Yeah. And, and we try to, to, to handle different fitness levels, of course, with different, different um, yeah. hosts, different guides, you know, to accommodate to different yeah. paces. But now people are more open to adventure yeah, than yeah. before. I, um, you, you did something like this last year in Oslo, right? It was going down from some tower or what was the name of this incentive? Abseiling. Uh, that was actually the, the fam trip you're thinking, thinking yes. about. But we've yes. done that several times, yes. Actually in Oslo you have the ski jump. Uh, yes. at Holman Colin, which is very famous, was in the Olympics, and it's kind of an icon in uh, in mm -hmm. Oslo. And it's literally 20 minutes outside of the city center. So from the city center, where everything is super vibrant and cool and uh, yeah. amazing architecture, you travel just 20 minutes, and you're literally in the middle of nature um, on the, at the ski jump. You have yeah. forests, you have uh, ski slopes, if you want. Um, and um, there we do, yeah, zip lining and abseiling. So basically mm -hmm. hanging from a rope <laughs> without any... Any, any wall uh, from the top of the ski jump down and it's a, it's quite a, a challenging experience uh, just the first moments um, Sabrina from Hot Hospital to yeah. exchange can, uh, can confirm that the first moment of getting over that uh, railing yeah. is, is the, the most challenging part yeah. but it's also amazing uh, as a team building activity yeah. a motivational activity yeah. you know everybody is encouraging because Sabrina when she did it she posted on social media that it made her face her fears and do it anyway so it's it's how it makes you feel and yes it's scary but you do it and you realize it's not as scary as it actually is and yeah the reward is. afterwards yeah the reward yeah. is that feeling. I yeah. just had yesterday on our on our company uh, Instagram, I posted a, f a picture of uh, a Via Ferrata yeah. um, in, in Loen and someone commented, I would never, you know, I would love to do it, but I would be too scared. So it's yeah. always about that um, motivation from someone else. And if you are a group, you have peer motivation. So That's people are, are like really, you know, encouraging each other. And in the end, yeah. um, most of them do it and then they feel so excited yeah. and happy about that they actually did yeah. it. That's very interesting. I didn't know about it, but it's a very good point about this new experience. But also, yeah. more adventure and more back to the roots and more nature. But on the other side, from, it depends on the markets really also. Yeah. On the other side, I also get more requests for back to the style of um, pampering uh, incentives, uh, higher luxury, okay. uh, you know, uh, higher level service. So there's that aspect as yeah. well. It really depends on, on, on the source market too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about these extreme uh, adventures, I also know about one company they organize for their employees, um, like walking in, in a cave, which had the quiet... Um, it was very difficult physically because you had to, to go with a guide and a lot of climbing. So it was also very physically challenging activity. Yeah. Yeah, we do a lot of those things. Uh, you know, ice caving, ice climbing on glaciers, um, uh, crawling in mine shafts. You know, <laughs> there's lots, of, lots of different things yeah. that you can do that are a little bit more challenging, but it yeah. has the same effect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There is no harm in, in, in stopping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no harm in stopping halfway, but in the end, yeah. you feel uh, like you've accomplished something. Exactly. Yeah. And so can you share a couple of examples of like incentives which you organized and had this wow moment? This mm -hmm. people are never seen anything like this before. Well, 
every single incentive has those wow moments. Um, that's basically the goal of, of an incentive yeah. to deliver on that. So I even have those myself. I, I get surprised all the time yeah. at the places I end up when I also go on research trips and, and inspections and discovery tours. There is so much variety in this country and so yeah. many hidden gems all around that it's always surprising so so i mean that access to unique locations yes. and wonderful places is very yes. strong here um i'm thinking i can think of several one of all of them actually but think about uh flying by helicopter over the lingen alps you imagine these amazing snowy peaks uh you know you don't only have the alps in in, in france and down south yes. but we also have Alps here, up here in the north, the Scandinavian uh, style Alps. Um, you land in the middle of nowhere. There is a, a hidden distillery in a World War II bunker uh, where you're just completely alone and you enter there and you have uh, the one of the world's best gins or whiskeys wow. that you get to taste and you, yeah. you hear the story. Um, we have uh, one of the most exciting and it's getting a, to be a very very popular destination now it's uh, it's not as as accessible because you know it's not open to mass tourism which makes it even more special yeah. is svalbard i don't know if you've heard of svalbard it's norwegian territory but it is actually the northernmost uh, inhabited location mm -hmm. so it is um, the highest you can scroll up on your Google Maps, uh, yeah. on the world map, uh, yeah. it's, it's high above uh, Iceland, uh, Greenland. So, I mean, it's literally the end of the world. You have 1,000 inhabitants there. You have uh, 2,000 dogs and about 3,000 snow scooters. Wow. And basically, the entire experience is so special from the moment you arrive everything is a story you become explorers you have icebergs you have northern lights experience it, it's literally a once in a lifetime experience and there are many norwegians even that dream to go there once in their life uh, and haven't had the chance to do that so those uh, uh programs are incredibly um wonderful of course any northern lights program uh remotely like snow scooters dog sledding um cruises under the northern and lights um, a combination of all of those activities yeah. uh, remain obviously uh, very very popular and are in high demand um, in the Arctic up north, uh, we go a lot of times to, to Bode and the Foten Islands. Mm -hmm. uh, Bode is now, has now been named, uh, European capital of culture for 2024. Yeah. So there are, there's a lot of things happening yeah. in this, uh, uh, a destination far up north that yes. nobody knows about well now increasingly <laughs> a number of people know about it um, and then there you you have for example the salt stroman which mm -hmm. is the world's strongest uh, tidal current in the sea that you can explore by rib boats you can go on eagle safaris you can go uh in this incredible scenery um, it's it's a very popular amount of, of uh, amongst the photogra photography enthusiasts yeah. because it's like one of the top places in the world to go to uh, to take those the most insane pictures yeah. uh, you can go kayaking in the midnight sun and you get these sceneries literally that remind you of everything at once it reminds you of of uh, mountains in in uh, in the alps but in the same time you have uh, caribbean colors in the sea you have beaches you know yeah. it's it's just incredibly impressive so think of um glamping on a private yeah. island where yeah. you have uh, tents with incredibly glamping, by the way, is glamorous camping Yes, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, we need to we need to be more specific about our terminology. <laughs> That's true. So you are on a private island. You have your comfortable bed. You have a private yeah. chef cooking for you there. You go hiking around. You go kayaking. I mean, it's truly exceptional experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a mix of we always try to make a mix of of, of experiences that are yeah. both active and for example uh, culinary experience yeah. are a very very big thing in Norway because uh, also Norway ranks yeah. uh, on top of the world now in terms of gastronomy and Nordic cuisine is incredibly exciting to discover yeah. um, we can have a 
a lot of fjord incentives in the on the west coast bergen stavanger uh, where you have different styles of fjord experiences yeah. where you get really really close to mountains waterfalls yeah. you might have seen uh, one of our events now in may for the corona heroes where we had a yeah. dj on the yacht playing by a waterfall for yeah. for i mean there's lots of different things you can do in the fjords and combine that with the um, culinary experiences yeah. at the highest so level all the senses basically as well all the senses constantly uh i can go on and on and on you can yeah. include viking But culture I like, I, like, i like particularly the this place where you go there are only thousand inhabitants um uh, that's Svalbard. very interesting yeah so so yeah. yes i mean these but there's several examples around yeah. norway allsund for example beautiful destination as well we did an incentive there for a finance company it's literally mm -hmm. as if you were in a national geographic documentary yeah. uh, you know you, there is a, a seabird island with 500,000 seabirds puffins i don't know if you know what yeah. puffins are uh, beautiful seabirds with these um, oh, yeah. red orange beaks uh, <laughs> you can see them all around you and it's literally something that you see in documentaries yeah. on tv yeah, yeah. and yeah. one of the highest values in norway is that you are never surrounded by masses or other people yeah. you always are almost completely on your own in many cases entirely on your own so it feels that's much more ex exclusive yeah. as well because you are the only one in that uh, in that experience yeah. um and then yeah i love everything that's remote private islands yeah. private uh, caves uh, you know <laughs> arrive on some location and then you have yeah. a, an experience or an yeah, event I also, there i also know that part of the incentive is also very nice when you incorporate a couple of uh, means of transport so you will have a boat you will have a train you will have an electric car you will have a bicycle and also it, it makes you feel that you actually do more things um yeah. and coming now to the last question so if anyone has a question please ask now and uh, before we and if you want more inspiration on yeah. norway let me know we'll have a exactly. seminar i can give you lots of uh, lots of yeah. example programs what's nor uh, we have uh, actually a question from Tina what's Norway's USP in comparison to Sweden, Scotland or Ireland for example Norway's USP unique selling proposition yeah well actually um, Norway is considered to have the most dramatic landscapes uh, the yeah. biggest variety in mm -hmm. uh, natural landscapes like if you think of Denmark for example it's mainly flat as a country uh, Sweden has mountains um, but Norway is um, first of all more dramatic uh, it is also a very long stretched out country that goes from south to uh, higher above uh, you know uh, by the border of Russia so it tops the other uh, Scandinavian countries in terms of uh, locations for northern lights arctic experiences um and also it has um yeah very big variety within the country uh it uh, it it offers so many different things uh, too many to name so so it's uh, definitely something that uh, um uh, gives us uh, an advantage compared to the other scandinavian countries I'm not saying the other scandinavian countries are not beautiful they are very beautiful but norway is like extra special <laughs> and that, does it happen that actually people want to do like an incentive across the scandinavian destinations so they want to do uh, norway and sweden sometimes uh less now than mm -hmm. before uh, people realize that there is so much to experience in each yes. country and they want to they respect that and they want to see as much as they, they can of that country yeah. um the requests that want to combine all of those destinations mostly come from uh the asian market who are yeah, who still have markets. a little bit of yeah. that need to have as many stops as possible yeah. and as many different places as possible during their trip because perhaps it will be once in a lifetime that yeah. they travel that bar if it's from a, a long haul uh, yeah. uh, source market so so that might be a bit different yeah. but most of our european uh, clients will definitely stay yeah. within the country that makes sense yeah okay so last question and the hard one now is the pandemic and budgets being frozen do you think this business area will suffer um it has 
obviously already i should be on the move right now from incentive to incentive to incentive yeah. throughout norway uh it's normally our high season for the incentives yeah. and there is actually there's nothing happening literally zero activity and uh, that's the case for for many of us and most of us actually so it's very sad to see that and we've lost a lot of uh, revenue because of that um If we think after Corona, I'm not, uh, I don't think it will uh, suffer as much because once we get over these hurdles and these struggles, I think that actually incentives will become even more valuable. Yeah, um, because people and haven't seen each other for so long. People want experiences. Yeah. They are craving yeah. to go somewhere and do things yeah. and see people and meet yeah. again and Yeah. It, I think it will definitely grow in value. Um, yeah. I can also see that many companies who had to uh, cancel their incentives for 2020 are combining their incentive uh, winners from 2019 okay. and 2020 now for 2021. Yeah. Okay. So that means they are increasing the size of their incentives, which is great if you had already yeah. ongoing projects. Um, but there's also a lot of companies that are... Um, reinvestigating and choosing different destinations especially if they had plans to do long haul incentives mm -hmm. i believe that the long haul is going to take much longer mm -hmm. so i think the first the the within the regionals or within or on the same continent at least will be more popular uh, in the first year than uh, traveling very far yeah. because it still feels a little bit risky yeah. you know if anything happens and uh, you are halfway across the world yeah. it's not as easy yeah. to deal with with that insecurity yeah. um it will still take time uh, but we can see already now that requests are coming back slowly and people are now that we are all talking about reopening borders etc people are starting to think uh, we are still scared of second waves everywhere around the world i mean um, in in norway we have a very very low rate of infection mm -hmm. uh, compared to most countries so we're not i mean we see that there's an increased demand also for us based on the fact that norway is perceived as a safe destination yeah, yeah. It's a fresh destination with a very good uh, social system mm -hmm. with amazing healthcare support if, in case yeah. you, you would need it. Um, it is accessible. It's close yeah. for many European countries. Mm -hmm. And also we have social distancing by yeah. nature. You know, there's a lot of yeah. space. There's not a lot of <laughs> inhabitants. And in the same time, we have an additional advantage right now. Uh, that is that our local currency is extremely low. Look, mm -hmm. it hasn't been as low in the past 30 years. That means that also in terms of budgets, it becomes an option for many more people than uh, than uh, before. Uh, so, so I'm not too worried about uh, a little bit later, but yeah. we still have some months to go and it's important to keep encouraging our clients to plan now mm -hmm. for later to 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 not abandon their ideas because yeah. suddenly everything is going to pick up everything is is going to fill up very quickly and also we need to survive and and yeah. stay alive we need to all be supporting each other yeah. so that means yeah agencies and dmcs trying a little harder uh, to sell even if you are in a very difficult situation mm -hmm. like everybody is in the same boat we're all struggling mm -hmm. with the day-to-day -day, with the financials with the the, the extra demands that this mm -hmm. period has uh, but we need to keep thinking ahead and trying to move forward rather than to stop and a uh, question from maris are companies increasing budgets of incentives Increasing budgets initially, not yet. Uh, I think there is a, ve a very strong tendency towards maintaining budgets. Yeah. So people were scared that they would, the budgets would decrease, um, but that's not necessarily the case. And you can also see that there is more um, interest to focus on industry clients of, well, industries that have been doing well, actually, in yeah. the corona period. You can also see at uh, networking events and fairs and, and, uh, and digital fairs that are targeting specific industries at the moment because they know mm -hmm. there is buying power there yeah. more so than in specific other industries that have yeah. suffered a lot during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So all those companies that have suffered a lot, they are still looking at their yearly, yearly results. They are looking at 
what they can cut and how they can restructure. Yeah. So incentives are not their top priority. Mm -hmm. But industries that are doing well are, mm -hmm. of course, yeah. going to go along with their with their previous plans and have the the budget mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. Also, the industries that are doing well, they have been working a lot in the past four months and they will be in the position to want to reward their employees for the hard extra work that they've been doing in the past months. Everybody deserves a br brilliant experience yeah. now. I <laughs> And uh, what is the lead time of requests? We touched on this, so maybe a quick uh, recap. Yeah, quick uh, conclusion. Um, it mostly six months to a year for, for mid size, smaller and mid size in, incentives and uh, uh, over a year to up to two years for large scale incentives with uh, several thousand participants. Yeah. And uh, we're concluding with Tina's comment that's very true. And so many companies are postponing to next year, which lowers capacity already. So I guess capacity of the hotels and the venues. It's important, yeah, to inform your clients about that as yeah. well. That yeah. it's, uh, that you need to make a, a, a decision at some point because otherwise it's either going yeah, to absolutely. become very expensive or, or not available simply. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, Heidi, so we are done. That was our last episode <laughs> this week. <laughs> oh, it yeah. was so much fun. Yeah, it was I so love much fun. Uh, everyone who has joined us from the very beginning, thank you so much and for your engagement and for your comments and for your DMs and your posts on social media. It was very, very fun and uh, very encouraging. So definitely Heidi and I will be looking forward to trying um, a new topic yeah so um, is there a new, new thing you want us to cover let us know um, thank you kim uh, thank you laura thank you tina thank you rebecca thank you maris thank um, you everybody you are amazing yes um yeah just um, so empowering and so so positive so um it's i'm very sad that uh, that's the last episode but um <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Me too. Thank you thank so much to you, Irina. Thank you for your excellent insights. It was great initiative. Thank you. This was my first one, so looking forward to catching up on the other seasons. Megan from 2B UK DMC. Yes, and uh, definitely, please, everyone who was here on the chat, connect with each other on LinkedIn or on Instagram, because that's also one of the aspects that we want to encourage the networking through our networks and introducing you to each other. So we want definitely to keep in touch. And I hope, Heidi, we can be in touch soon and plan a new, a new season, yeah, season two. <laughs> so many ideas. We have to do something with them. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. Thank yeah. you so much for doing this with me. It's been a really, really, a really big pleasure. Yeah, so so let's keep doing it. Learning a lot this week as well, so definitely on point, very trendy, all the insights. So we are prepared for the for when the business resumes. We are well equipped. We are so ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah, everyone, thank you one more time. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay in touch. Connect with each other. Connect with me and Heidi, and we will be in touch. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.